I think we'll start this out with an example. You the hill we're changing. You're going to have a pass. Oh, I'm a bit loud. Oh, you grabbed by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, right. We might be wrong. We're funny, but not always a pass. switch gears a little bit because I, we've talked quite a bit about different design types uh, and I want you to know that there's something cool that you can do with all of these things which is combine them. They don't have to stand alone. This is where you get to use your brain. All right. So just because the book says you have to have an, an ABA or an ABABE or a BAB or a multiple baseline or an alternating treatment design or a changing criterion design or whatever design it is Anyway, whatever design it is that you're working with, it does not mean you have to use them alone. All right, the book can't possibly the books uh, can't possibly go into all the different design types that you could combine because it's functionally unlimited. Let me give you an example. All right, so several years ago, I was interested. Uh, a student approached me uh, with replicating an old study. Right? And that old study was the uh, the Hawthorne effect study, where um, looking at the effects of lighting on uh, employees' behavior and performance um, in in a, I think it was in a um, Oh, what was it? Oh, in a factory type setting, long, long time ago, right? Um, and what they found out was they, this was the study that led to the Hawthorne effect where they found out just being a part of the experiment, just being observed was changing their behavior. Um, so, but the, the lighting question was an interesting one. This student, Mark Olson, had a, had a great question about what effects does lighting have on the college classroom? So, ba bang all right, hello, we can do that. Mark, sounds good, let's design it for next quarter. So we did. Right. Um, so what did we do? We, we had we had all sorts of things. Um, first off, we had we knew that we wanted to use um, reversals. We wanted to use the ABAB, -A -B, right? Switching back and forth between the lighting conditions. Um, so lights off in one condition, lights on in another condition. Lights off in one condition, lights off. So you're just going off and on all quarter long. So we lights on for one week, lights off for the next week. But we thought we should probably capture a baseline um, on the different behaviors that we were recording. So we were looking at five different, we were looking at several different behaviors. I don't remember if it was five, um, but we were looking at a few different behaviors on attentiveness in the classroom, the relative position of the students in their chair. Like were they slouching? Were they sitting up? Were they attentive? Were they making notes? all sorts of little things and we used a uh, um, a momentary time sample to capture the data why because the the two observers in the classroom were recording data on five individuals so every two minutes they would look up and they would track the behavior of those five individuals and they would make a note every two minutes it's a 10 week long quarter every two minutes we captured data on five people that's a lot of data so but we thought you know what that's not enough data we better do it across two classrooms so we set up a multiple baseline so the first baseline was lights on just like you'd stand uh, just like in a typical class and the next baseline was lights on just like we'd expect in a typical class except then we started our phase changes so we went to b and we offset that b um, for the for the second group right so you get the idea we carried baseline longer for the second group or for the second classroom but we did the same intervention so then what it ended up being was then in various classrooms everything was offset that if it was lights on in classroom a it was lights off in classroom b so we actually had a multiple baseline with an with the um, with a reversal design, sorry with a, with a withdrawal design design built in and we tracked behavior using a momentary time sample it's a huge amount of data and we found out there's not much difference in behavior um, there was some um, but um, ultimately there was not a ton of difference in behavior and part of that we think was the confound of the fact that the classrooms had windows in them and in the classrooms were offered during the day so even when you told or the classes were offered in the day so even when you told we turned the lights off you still had a little bit of ambient light in the classroom we tried to minimize it, but we did the best we could. The point being that notice we combined a multiple baseline and we combined it with a, um, a reversal there's a withdrawal design. So <laughs> you don't have to worry about making sure you fit into some particular box. That's your starting point. Then you can take all those boxes or blocks as you might want to think and start building on them. So you could do things like reversal des or withdrawal designs. Then you could do things with like adding changing criteria to that. Then you could add multiple element designs or you could do things like multiple baselines with randomized alternating treatment designs. There's so much you can do. Um, some of it doesn't make any sense. I'm kind of just spewing things together here um, but 
you're limited by the logic. You're not limited um, by the name of the design. So I just want you to remember that, that really the building blocks of this research, of this field, are the AB design, or specifically the ABA design, so you can get that functional relation established. Um, and from there, you add the multiple treatment, or the, no, not multiple treatment, sorry, you add the multiple baseline design, and you add your alternating treatments. And you can start to take all of those pieces and mix and match and have some fun with it because you might be able to come up with a new design type or a design that answers a specific question that you may have that isn't traditionally answered in a traditional fashion with something like a, a withdrawal design. So um, don't, I'm trying to express that you shouldn't just be limited by these labels, right? Find the logic, understand the logic, then the labels are largely irrelevant. Then you start to figure out how to do experimentation. Um, and I know most of you watching this are not going to be experimental psychologists. You're not going to be doing this work in the laboratory. But if it's the sooner you start to learn the logic of it, and the more you focus on what I'm getting at right now, it'll make functional analyses that much easier. Right? So you don't have to be constrained by these rigid lines when you're doing these types of this type of work. There is more to it than that. There's more nuance, and there's more there's more freedom than what you might originally think. So anyway, combine these things, have fun, come up with some cool designs on your own. Make sure they're logically sound, of course, by comparing it to the logic of the ones that there, that currently exist. So there you go. <sighs> like, subscribe, share.